Exactly. Um, sp- speaking of Arsenal, I want to put up this comment that I read today. Josh Cronkery is privately confident that Arsenal can give Man City an even better run for their money this season than the previous two campaigns. Now, giving them a better run for their money, essentially, I'm reading between the lines here, suggests winning the league title. I'm going to go to Don first on this. Do you think Arsenal are ready to take City's title away from them this season? Boy, <laughs> right now, Arsenal haven't... I mean, obviously, you've signed California in it, but then... Last season, your defence was was good. Like, what, are you going to concede only four goals this season? <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? As much as you're going to keep the ball out the other, other side of the net, you need to score more goals. And that's something Arsenal at the beginning of the season, it wasn't fluid, you know. Um, a lot of the time, you're getting bailed out from your set pieces or moments of brilliance. Overall, throughout the season, ideally, you want to be a little bit more fluid. And ideally, you want you want someone like a striker, like what you're saying, Giuseppe, to, to bury a lot of these chances that you're going to be creating. So at the minute, as it stands, Terry, it's it's hard to say, man, because I haven't really there hasn't there hasn't been that signing as of yet where I'm like, yeah, Arsenal are the favourites now. That's why I said if they get Osiman, then I'll look at them a little bit differently. I'm like, okay, I I reckon Arsenal will probably be the favourites at the minute. Um, but at the minute, I'd probably still say City, man. I'd probably still say City. I can't lie. Arsenal need to still still make some moves. Fair enough. I listen for me. Arsenal will never, until Arsenal win the Premier League, and even then there could be a shot, a different shot, but like you can't be the favourites to win the league with Man City and Pep Guardiola in the league. I don't think that's... How can you be when they've won the last four and they've they've still got the hot players they've got and the manager they've got? They've still, they're always going to be favourites going into the league, right? If we win the league this year, maybe next year you'll say, listen, Arsenal are favourites. But uh, as of... Right now, I think we will win the league personally. Um, I just feel, and it might be naive because I thought that like, people said the same about the four, Pete. I just think that you're going to have a team that have come. A team last year, we the year before last, we bottled it. Last year, we went right to the last day of the season and we felt, felt that heartache, yeah, of going to the final game and not winning it. The quality of the players we've got, adding a year of experience onto them already. The signings will hopefully be bringing in and the signing we already got in Califuri. Uh, by the way, if we sign Moreno and Califuri, I know we still need a striker and stuff and attack 100%, but our two weakest positions last year, you would argue, were the eight and the left-back position. They were probably our two weakest positions, and you're now signing two players that fit them positions. I think that Man City now might not have the same drive that we will have. And that's why I think we'll pull ahead and we'll win the season. I'm really talking with chest right now. And I don't know if it's going to bite me in the ass, but listen, what's the worst case you like guys are going to banter me, regardless if we win or if we, if we lose the league, regardless of how much chest I had, I feel like you guys would be bantering me anyway. I think we don't only win the league next year. I actually think we comfortably win the league next year. I think that come. I think we don't win it. I think we win it before the last game of the season. Giuseppe, the thing is, yeah, people were saying this last year about City. They were like, oh, you know, they won the free peat now. You know, maybe they're going to lose that motivation. You know, no one's done a four peat before. They've gone and done it. Listen, I, no one's done a five peat yeah. before, bro. <laughs> I, I hear no it. One thing five I years in a row, one, bro. My argument to that one thing, my only rebuttal to it, which is it could be true, it could not be true, but it's my only rebuttal to it is. Man United have done a free peat So therefore there is more on a four peat because you want to be the only club to have ever done that. You've now be- they've now beaten Manchester United and got the four peat Now they're just battling themselves. Yeah. And of course you would rather get another one. No one's going to not want that, mm. but there's not going to be maybe that same drive of we got to do this. Cause then we get even further ahead of, of Manchester United and, and that in the sense of, not further ahead because they're not ahead of as a club of Man United. I don't think they'll ever be able to generate enough to get a past Man United. But to, to close some gaps, you know, to give them some stuff over Manchester United. Now it's just battling with themselves. And I think that that might not have the same amount of... You've also got a team of guys that have won so much, yeah, that you've got that experience, but you also got the side of the lapsidaisicalness of it. They've also got Rodri that they've had consistency from for like the past three years without missing like a game or something for injury. I'm not saying he's going to get injured. You never know. You can't count that for a reason to win the league. But I just think that these guys might have a drop off this year, having just won. Last year, they had a drop off. They did. They just managed to not have the drop off in the league. 
Yeah, they had the drop off, and they did have the drop off in the league. Really, at at points, Arsenal just didn't capitalize on it last year. They dropped off in the cup competitions. Yeah, mm. they they dropped off in the Champions League. Yeah, they dropped off. They didn't win the FA Cup in the end because they dropped off because their their minds were like, I'm not going to say Man United didn't deserve to win, but you could see the one time where it was like, yeah, this don't look like Manchester City that are hungry, hungry for it. So I think that's the one thing I'll say for Man City. And I think next year they might look more towards doing the Champions League. That might be more of their focus. Definitely the new format of the Champions League, which is going to change a lot of people. A lot of us has actually forgot about that, myself included. I forgot about this new format of the Champions League and how that may affect teams, right? Because normally for an Arsenal, when, for an example, when the Champions League starts up, you've normally got four three all right t- one maybe decent team and two like meh teams now your first four games can be something like barcelona by munich psg and 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 like someone like leipzig or something yeah they could be your first four games because of the new way the system is mm. so i think that could be even a challenge in itself but listen mm. i just think that arsenal are going to have more to go for it i think um Declan rice has now had a season in the team with the signings we're making I agree. Like, I, I just think we'll have what it takes to win the league this year. I think Arteta as well, people will remember. People don't want to remember, forget that Arteta is a young manager. He learns every season. He has proven to me. It's why I don't care about I don't care for people saying Arteta out right and that. I don't agree with it. He's shown me that he learns every single season. He's the thing, is, just a, the, the thing is, I've got a, I've got a few question marks about your your attack, right? More than your more than your defense. I think your defense is it's it's, it's the best in the league, isn't it? Do you know what I'm saying? It's the yeah. best in the league, right? But in terms of your attack, obviously we know Saka puts up numbers. Like Saka getting numbers is inevitable. But last year we saw that his injury record, his injuries even were becoming more and more frequent. And from the from the sounds of things, it sounded like he played majority of the season um, with injuries. You know, and there's only so long that he's going to keep playing. There's certain times where he's not going to be fit enough to play, right? So the question is, is Saka going to replicate the same sort of season that he had in terms of the numbers? Because most of Arsenal's play comes from the right-hand side, bro. You know, if you go look at the left in comparison to, to the right, it's mainly on the right. Um, Martinelli, he's got, he's got to have a redemption season as well, like, because yeah. the season before last, well, he had a very good year. Havertz, is Havertz going to replicate the sort of form that you saw as well? So, I've still got a few question marks about, about Arsenal's yeah. attack. I oh, think for bro. me, Arsenal are a very well-oiled machine. So, you're over 90 minutes, I feel like you've got so many different ways of scoring. You've got a Trossard, who's a game-changer. You've got uh, Saliba, Gabriel that can score set pieces. You know, California now as well. There's so many avenues where I'm looking at it and I'm like, yeah, they can get a goal from somewhere. But over 90 minutes, bro, like, if you're not playing as... If you're not being as fluid as what you were towards the end of the season and you haven't got a striker, maybe it will be, will be the attack that lets you down rather than the defence. Yeah, listen, it will... It will listen, the defence ain't going to let us down, in my opinion. I think we've got the best defence in the league uh, and we've added a jury to it. And if we bring Moreno in... We've added defensively to our team once again in the midfield a bit, but like I agree, we need an attacker. That's why I think we need a striker. That I, I've said that personally. That's why I think if we like, there's no doubt if we bring in a striker, I don't have a doubt in us winning the league. Honestly, I really don't. I think if we get signed that striker, we win the league. I think yeah. the thing is, I put you lot as favourites. If you is, is <laughs> Saka the the fall off from Saka? I don't think will happen. Every season he's become better. Yeah, in my yep. opinion, and he'll continue to do so. He's just that sort of player. Um, and you got to remember last season, one thing that I also sometimes have to take into consideration as well is how bad the season Martinelli had and how injury-riddled season Jesus had, and that made him bad last season. So this is two players that went from getting us a few goals a season before to actually doing nothing for us last season. Now, if these two, if our, tax, if our team plays like they did last season, with the goals and that we scored, but them two start actually performing and adding goals to the game as well, then that might be the the, the bits and pieces you need in certain games. A Gabriel uh, Martinelli, a Gabriel Jesus. But I 100% think we need a striker or, or a winger, like 100%. Yeah, I, I, I've said for a few weeks now, if, if City sign no one else from this point and you, you bring in Moreno and you bring in a really good striker, I would make you the marginal favourites. So City, of course, still can win the league. I wouldn't write them off completely. That would be stupid. But I think you would have a chance. Uh, Sean here says, we were uh, lopsided in our attack last season. This year, 
with our left hand side uh, being upgraded will be more dangerous. Striker would be the cherry on top. And then Manny says, personally, if we lose any to any team outside of the top six, uh, we don't win the league. And depending on who we bring in the window, Alvarez and Nico. Oh, you want, Look, you, want, I mean, you, want, you want Nico Jackson, do you? Hmm? <laughs> 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 um, another team that looking at a, a, a striker for serious money. What was your boys' thoughts on Spurs maybe having to spend sixty-five million pounds on the ex-Chelsea and Liverpool man Solanke? I think I think it will be a brilliant signing, Terry. You know, I don't know why why Solanke gets all this. You know, people look at him and they laugh because of the name. Really, and in, when in reality, last season he got what is it nineteen Premier League goals he scored last yeah, year. Um, and start of the season, Bournemouth were not good. Bournemouth, one of the teams that I was looking at, and saying, yeah, if you go over there, you're guaranteed three points. That's why I was pissed when we when we drew with them. You know, yeah. um, in terms of his finishing, he's good in front of goal. He can link up play. He's good on the ball as well. Physical, you know. So it'll be a no brainer for Spurs. I think. He, I think. He'll be better than what they've got right now up top, in it because we've got Richarlison at the minute. Son up top, up top, you know, might be a better finisher than Solanke, but Solanke is going to score you goals as well. So I think it'll be a brilliant signing, man, because he, he's someone I'll take at Chelsea again right now. You know, he's one of the few in the market that actually have Premier League experience and score goals. So yeah, I think it'll yeah. be a good signing, man. I think he's all right. I think he's a good signing for Spurs. I think if Arsenal signed him, I'd be a little bit disappointed in in him being the striker that we signed. 19 uh, Premier League goals, Giuseppe. 19 Premier League goals last season. Okay, cool. But the season before that, he had like six or seven. And I'm not trying to say that as a thing of like, uh, whatever, like he's not going to do it again because he done it, didn't do it the year before that. But there's them side of things. He's also never played in a low block against a low block. But this is something that we sometimes never look at with certain strikers and that in uh, when we look at these lower teams like Bournemouth and that. Who the hell low blocks against Bournemouth? Whereas everyone low blocks against Arsenal. So if we signed him or Tottenham, maybe he won't be as good. But I do think he's a good player. And I think he could he could replicate that at Spurs. 100% there's a, there's a chance. And I think for Spurs, he's a great player. 60 million, 65 million. That might be a bit of a, that might be a bit of a bit expensive for him. But the striker market is what it is. But when you're hearing links to like Osherman for like 70 million and stuff. Uh, 80, 75 million, you think mm. like surely there's a level above, like the, the, for, for to ask for 65 million, like Osherman and that are level above him, in my opinion. But he has Premier League proven in that, and I think he's kind of perfect for Spurs as well. So for Spurs, I think he's a great signing, and I think like he's probably one of the best options that they can get. Um, to be honest, I think him or it will be him or Tony. I'd be more, as I said before, uh, I think I said it to tell, I'd be more fearful of them signing Tony than than Solanke even though for some reason no one's going for Tony that's a whole different thing but I'd be more fearful for that so yeah listen it would be a good signing for them it's kind of what they need the Kate wait hold on I see I just see Kate's comment she said um big up Kate as well she said Solanke is a is a one season wonder he's definitely not a one season wonder he he bagged so many goals on the way for them to come back up from the championship as well um coming through the ranks him and Tammy He's to clear over 40, 40 goals between them, you know. He's a goal scorer. That's one thing about him. He's a goal scorer. I know it's not the the Ossimans and the big names under the lights and that, but Solanke will score you goals. He's better than what you've got up top right now. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily call him a one-season wonder. What I would say is I wonder how he handles the pressure of going back to a big club. Because the other that's, two that's times at big clubs, that's, that, that's more whether or not he can handle being that the spotlight on him because no one expected what he did last year. And sometimes it's easier to flourish when the spotlight is not a pot. When you're a backup dancer, you know, it's easy to sit in the back and stay in time because no one's actually looking at you, but suddenly you're the main guy at the front, the spotlights on you and that pressure can sometimes take, take it, take it back. But I think it's a good signing. 65 million is quite a lot of money, but I do think it's a, a pretty decent signing. Uh, this year's,